It's so important to pick the right panel for your project, and there are many things that go into that decision, including location, building design, local codes and requirements, look, and more. Today, we are looking into the SMI one-inch mechanical seam panel and learning about its application, installation, when you should and shouldn't choose it for your roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. In this series, we look at a specific profile and discuss when you should and shouldn't use it, installation requirements, applicable engineering, and more. Our profile today is the SMI one inch mechanical seam standing seam profile. It's a standing seam mechanical lock system, which means it's installed with hidden clips and fasteners on the male leg and the female leg is seamed to the male leg to engage the panel. Sheffield recommends a maximum 17 inch panel width and a minimum of 24 gauge steel to ensure the panel has enough strength and rigidity. This panel uses approximately three inches of material to be formed. The SMI one inch mechanical seam panel can be installed at slopes as low as a 312. This panel has a lot of history. It was one of the earliest standing seam metal panels ever made and was traditionally formed on a break and hand seamed with a mallet. Engineering is important because it uses actual data gathered about the exact panel profile and ensures that if you install your roof per those specifications, you're giving it the best chance possible to perform. For the SMI one inch mechanical seam, there are no tests currently available, but Sheffield Metals is working on updating non-engineered profiles to have engineering. Stay tuned for updates on that. This panel does, however, qualify for the standard SMI 40 year PVDF paint warranty and Galvalume warranties. This panel is a good choice for residential applications at slopes at or above a 312, especially if you're doing an historical project that requires you to use the original panel profile. Don't use this panel over open framing when you need an engineered system or at slopes below a 312. Always check your local building codes to make sure this panel meets your area's requirements. If you want a mechanical seam panel that is tested and the performance is verified in a laboratory, consider the SMI inch and a half mechanical seam. Now let's look at how this goes down on a roof. Make sure to follow any installation guidelines or requirements available. I've already fabricated these panels with a one inch bend at the eave and a one inch box at the top, but if you wanna learn how to do it yourself, there's a couple links in the description down below. On the deck, the panel hooks onto the eave, is pinned on the box end with a couple fasteners, and uses clips on the male leg. Typically, this panel uses fixed clips, which limit the panel length to 25 feet. But if you want longer panel runs, use expansion clips. This bead of sealant prevents siphoning of water at the end of the panel. The next panel hooks onto the eave, the female leg is placed over the male leg and is seamed together. There are two kinds of bends, a 90 degree seam and a 180 degree seam. Make sure you know which is required with the engineering and I can tell you most of the time it's a 180 degree seam. This process is usually completed with a robotic seamer. I'm using a hand seamer for this example, but it takes a lot of extra labor to seam the entire roof with a hand seamer to 180 degrees. Now hand seamers are good when putting in a 90 degree bend at clip locations. This accomplishes a fixed point while you're laying panels so you can go back and seam the panels with a robotic seamer later per the seamer manufacturer's instructions. By putting that 90 degree seam in over the clip, it makes it easier for the robotic seamer to finish the 180 degree seam. Robotic seamers will give you a cleaner and more consistent seam than hand seamers and are obviously easier on the installer. If you use clips that come in two parts and can move freely rather than the fixed clips, the panel can expand and contract as needed at the eave. The Sheffield Metals installation details has a great thermal movement chart that shows how much of a gap you should leave at the eave based on the panel metal, deck material, and panel length. And details for this profile are available at sheffieldmetals.com. Again, this panel is one of the original standing seam profiles, and it can be seen on historical buildings and homes in a variety of materials, including copper and turn. Check out our history of tin roofing video to learn more about the roots of metal construction. If you want to know more about this panel or other panels that Sheffield Metals offers, I'll link their profile page in the description down below. Comment if you have any questions, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.